inverse of each one of these problems. So um, these are kind of some different examples here in understanding what is exactly going on. So the first thing that I would kind of want to explain with, this, with these problems is, well, we should know what the graph looks like, right? We are actually already discussed transformations of functions and graphing these two. So let's go ahead and just sketch this graph real quick. Maybe you kind of forgot uh, the transformations. So um, hopefully you guys recognize this would be y equals, you can swap the negative x plus 4, and then you factor out the negative x because this is not the first time we've done this. And therefore, you recognize that that is a square root graph that is being reflected about the y-axis and shifted four units to the right. So hopefully, we did our homework on transformations of functions. One, two, three, four. And we'd recognize the graph is going to look something like that. right? So now when I do my inverse, I'm looking for something that's going to be reflective about there. right? It's going to be reflective about the y equals x line. Maybe you can visualize it. Maybe you can't. Um, but hopefully, you guys can at least see that's what we're looking for. Um, all right, so now let's go ahead and do the inverse, right? Let's go ahead and replace this with y, swap the x and y's, and go ahead and solve. So this would be 4 minus y. All right, this is kind of like that warm up that we did, right? You just undo that by squaring. So we get x squared is equal to 4 minus y. Um, I could do, let's subtract the 4. I get an x squared minus 4 is equal to a negative y, divide by negative 1, divide by negative 1. So this turns into a negative x squared plus 4 is equal to y. Let's flip that over. Crap, I forgot to make sure you distribute that negative 1, right? No, sorry, it was positive. I did do it. OK, that's positive. So that's my equation. And you say, well, do I know how to graph that? Of course I do, right? That was just a review from. From uh, chapter three, or from section three. So let's see. This is a quadratic opening down four units up. One, two, three, four. And they say, ooh, uh, something's wrong. Because the black graph is not a true reflection of the blue graph. Agreed? What do you mean, sure? If you take this black graph and reflect it about the y equals x line, do you get the blue graph? Or do you get a portion of the blue graph? You get a portion. So then we got to say, well, which portion do you get? Do you get this portion like to the left of the vertex or to the right of the vertex? Right. To the right. And mathematically, we could represent that as x values that are greater than or equal to 0. So to make this inverse work, we're going to restrict the domain. To make this work, we have to restrict the domain of our answer. So our answer is not this. It's this. Got it? OK. Let's move on to, let's move on to the uh, next one here, which is um, 2x plus 1 uh, squared. Now, automatically, we should look at this problem and say, hey, this is not 1 to 1. So if that's not 1 to 1, we can't find the inverse, right? Yeah? Done. Problem's over. But then you say, oh, crap. All right, I've made a mistake. I'm sorry. There was actually a restriction on this. OK, so now we know that's only, oh, I'm sorry, actually. Sorry. So now we know that it's probably going to be only a portion of the parabola. So therefore, we can find the inverse of that. right? So we got to say, well, what portion of the parabola is it, though? Like, I, I got to visualize this. And thankfully, this is a quadratic. I can figure out what that quadratic is going to look like in terms of the graph. So let's go ahead and say, well, this would be y is equal to, if I factor out the 2, right? Because we got to factor out the 2 just like we had to factor out the negative. Factor out the 2, I recognize, oh, this is a horizontal compression of 2 and a horizontal shift one half unit to the left. Right? You guys see how such a good review today is? It's a really good review. So your graph probably looks something like this. There's negative 1. That would be negative 1 half. And we know, right, as far as that graph goes, it doesn't pass the horizontal line test, so it doesn't have an invert. The function, you know, it's not invertible. The inverse is not a function. However, when we look at this restriction, we say, oh, that's reflected about the negative 1 half, right? So, or x has to be less than or equal to negative 1 half. 
So actually, that function looks like that, right? Like piecewise functions, right? Remember, we did this for piecewise functions. We would graph it, and then we regraphed it based on the domain restrictions, OK? So then we say, all right, well, if we're going to have this new do, you know, reflection, it's going to be something about that line. So let's go ahead and figure it out. Well, I already have, oh, did I put this in the correct notation? I did not. Guys, you got to call me out on that. Right? So again, be careful. You know, even if you're speeding on a test or a quiz, like use your correct notation. We just used y in this case as a tool. That's the answer, OK? Make sure you put it back in that f inverse. In this one, we have a function in terms of y. So I can just use the y inverse notation. But before I do that, I'm going to swap the x and y's. OK, I know I have to square root. And remember, we introduced the square root, so now we have to include plus or minus. But there's a problem. We don't want plus or minus. Guys, like, if you look at a graph, here is square root of x. Here is negative square root of x. We don't want plus and minus. We don't want both of those. If we get both of those, we don't have a function. So we got to pick which one is going to represent the inverse better, this one or the negative version. You can see the negative version, right? So I'm not going to do, even though mathematically I use that plus or minus, for the, in, the, in this context of this problem, we're only going to include the negative version of the square root. Because otherwise, we wouldn't have a function, right? Which we know is not going to work. So we're restricting this to the negative square root. And now I can just subtract a 1. So I'll just have a uh, negative 1 minus the square root of x equals 2y, divide by 2, divide by 2. And you can distribute that or leave it there, however you want to. Um, let's actually just distribute that. Maybe factor it out. I don't know. Either way, not really concerned about that. Make sure you have your notation and making sure that you use the negative version of that square root. Yes, no, maybe so. So again, the main important thing is understanding these restrictions, guys. OK? Um, oh, one last thing I forgot to mention. So the other thing I'm going to talk to you guys is about the domain range. Now. To find the domain is what you already know how to do. This is nothing new. To find the domain, you just look at the graph and say, you know, what is the, the domain? Now, um, you could find the domain by using inequality and graphing it, whatever else. I'm just going to look at this graph, though. I can see that the domain is all real numbers from negative infinity to positive 4. Now, remember, if I need to find the range, could I find the domain of the inverse? Domain of the inverse is the range of the function, yes? But guys, for the problem like this, you should know what the graph looks like. You should know that the range is going to be from 0 to infinity, right? And again, you can see that the domain of the blue graph is 0 to infinity, right? Over here, um, the domain is really easy. It's given to you. I can't even give you an easier problem, right? If you have a domain restriction, you know what that domain is for that portion. So please, let's not get this one wrong. And then the range, I'm just going to go off to the base of knowing what the graph looks like. The range, nothing is going up or down, right? Everything's left or right. So therefore, the range, I already know, is going to be from 0 to infinity. So on this next round, rather than asking you guys to um, rather than asking you guys to prove that they're inverses of each other, I would like you guys to practice 